Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hey, listen, we're in a series um, on the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're wrapping it up next weekend and because it's Pentecost Sunday, and so we're going to wrap it up. Uh, we, on that particular day. It's going to be a great Sunday. You don't want to miss um, you know, what God wants to say, what God wants to do in any of our series. And one, the reason that we share these series with you, uh, that uh, what's happening, what's going on, the ones coming up, is uh, we want you to know, but we want you to invite people. It's a tool. The invitation is a tool. The, we give you that information because it can be used by you as a tool to invite your friends and family. Say, hey, here's what our church is talking about, and I'd love for you to be there uh, with me and just hear what God has to say. And so that, that's the reason that we announced these things. But Pastor and I were praying about it and talking about it and both agreed that though we could go a thousand different directions in teaching a series on the Holy Spirit, we chose, we chose to go a direction that would enable you, uh, our, our church family, uh, to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that goes beyond just a weekend experience. You know, sometimes I believe we have reduced the role of the Holy Spirit to, hey, Holy Spirit, I'll meet you at church on Sunday morning, and then you greet him when you come in, you experience his presence, and then you leave without him. And that's not his role. That's not why God sent the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit to live in our lives 24-7, to be there on Monday, Thursday, for every day. Come on, somebody. And, and, and how to have a relationship with him and how to experience his presence in our life. Let me, let me share this, this quick thought with you. Let me take you back to the Gospels for just a moment. And it was a time that uh, Jesus uh, was invited to come into a home. And the uh, individual that owned the home, her name was Martha. She had her sister Mary was there. You, you probably remember this, uh, this moment that Jesus had. So Jesus came into Martha's house. Everybody say Martha's house. So he comes into Martha's house, and uh, her sister Mary was there. And if you remember that moment, uh, you'll recall that uh, Jesus is teaching. Jesus is sharing his heart. Mary is sitting there listening to Jesus. Martha's running around like crazy. Can anybody here identify with Martha a little bit, right? So she's so busy. She's a lot of stuff going on. She's, she's got to get the house right. She's got to get everything right. And so she comes in there. She says to Jesus, Jesus, don't you even care about me? Don't you even care what's happening to me? Why don't you ask Mary to come and help me? And you know what Jesus said? He said, no. No, that's not going to happen because Mary's doing what is best right now. In this moment, in this season, it's best that Mary is doing what she's doing. She is hearing my heart. She's hearing what I've got to say. Here, here's the point that we can get from that. There are a lot of things that we could teach on. There are a lot of great nuggets of wisdom there, but here's the one that I want to point out this morning. Um, Jesus was in Martha's house. Jesus was present in Martha's house, but Martha didn't benefit from his presence. Did you get that? He was present in the house, but Martha didn't benefit from his presence. Let me read you a scripture that Jesus gives us in John 14, 16 through 17, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit, and he said, and I will ask the Father, he's referring to after his death, burial, and resurrection, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, talking about the Holy Spirit, but you know him for he dwells with you. And watch this part. He, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the helper promised by Jesus, he will be where? He will be in you. I believe that more often than not for a lot of Christians, and this is not a judgmental statement, I believe this is just reality. For a lot of Christians today, the Holy Spirit lives in them. He's in the house. He's present in their lives, but they're not benefiting from his presence. 
And really, that's what this whole series is, is about. This whole series is, is to help folks understand that, that, that God, the Holy Spirit, can help them or that God, the Holy Spirit, can help you like nobody else can. And he is in you. And truly, you are powerless if the Holy Spirit is not or does not have an active role in your life. You are absolutely powerless in this world. You're powerless to be the child that God's called you to be. You're, you're, you're powerless to overcome the challenges that are coming. Has anybody, has anybody noticed we got some crazy things happening? And let me just say this, it's not gonna get better. I know this morning you're like, Pastor John, I was coming to hear something a little bit more positive. <laughs> I'm positive it's not gonna get any better. It's not gonna happen. Matter of fact, the, the, we, just know, we just know as we progress in this life, we progress in this time that we have on this planet, it's not going to get easier. As a matter of fact, it's going to be more taxing. There are going to be more things to worry about. There are going to be more things to be concerned about. But I'm telling you, if the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Spirit that is in your life right now, if he has an active role, you will not flinch. You will not back up. You will move forward in power because that's the reason the Holy Spirit is in you. But you have to give him that place. He's not going to take that. Just because he's present in your life doesn't mean that you will automatically benefit from his presence. So th there is this scripture about the Holy Spirit that honestly, it's a bit odd. I, it's, it's really a bit odd, but once you unpack it and really understand it, 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 just, it, just, it just makes sense. Let, let me share this scripture with you about the Holy Spirit and about his role in our life and the relationship that he wants to have with us. It, it seems weird, but, but just, just, just hold on. Let's unpack this one. It's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, do not get drunk with wine, which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Is that not weird? The writer, the apostle Paul said, don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. I mean, couldn't he have said and used other examples than not being drunk <laughs> with wine? Like, don't kill, don't steal, don't have any other gods before me. Are, are you following this? It just seems odd that he would use those two, that he would compare those two. But when you, when you really unpack it and you really dig into what he's really saying there, it makes perfect sense. Because what Paul said, what he spoke of here in regards to this scripture and the role that the Holy Spirit wants to have in our life, what, what he's really saying is don't live your life under the influence of a substance, but live your life under the influence of a person. Don't live your life under the influence of a substance, but live your life under the influence of a person, this person being the Holy Spirit. Why? Because one will mess you up, the substance will mess you up, listen to this, but the other one will lead you to your destiny. When you're living a life under the influence of the Holy Spirit, he will lead you into your destiny. He will cause you to be the, the person that God's called you to be, the person that in your heart you really want to be for God. When you're under that influence. But, 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 but here, here is a question that I have. How do you measure if you're truly under the influence of the Holy Spirit? How do you measure that? How do, you, how do you measure if you're truly under the influence of the, what, the Holy Spirit? In other words, is there some sort of a spiritual check we can use? Well, the answer is, is yes. But before I get to what that is, let me, tell you this, let me tell you this experience that I've had many times. Something is going on with these mics, and we can all hear what the media team is saying. <laughs> and we don't need to. <laughs> so we could fix that, please. If I look this way, it's not their fault. The camera guys are going, it's not us. I promise it's just not us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're correcting it right now. Where was I? Oh, the experience that I've had many times, and that is, is I go to a wellness exam at least one time a year. 
And let me just say this, if you have the opportunity to have a wellness exam at least one time a year, please take that opportunity and take it seriously. And I'm specifically talking to the men here because we're typically the worst at it, right? And so when, when uh, I've, I've gone in for a wellness exam and, and that one time I went and had my sinuses looked at and stuff like that, has anybody ever had that done where you go, the, the ENT guy and, and, and it, it, you know, the doctors sometimes are sneaky. So I got to this ENT one time and he just I had a few issues and, and he, he sticks this thing up in my nose and he said, you're going to have a slight, it's going to be just a slight puff of air. Brother. It was no slight puff of air when he just, I mean, he hit that whatever he turned on there and it felt like the top of my head was going to come off and my eyeballs were going to come out of my socket. It was like, poof. It was like, whoa, won't you just, yeah, warn a brother next time. It's not a soft. It's just. So then I go to this, this other, my other doctor, my regular doctor, and um, to do my wellness exam. And so one of the things he does, you know, asks all kinds of questions and looks in the ears, nose, all these different things. And then he says, okay, we're going, to do, we're, going to, uh, we're going to need to draw some blood. And so I go have my blood drawn. And the reason that he wants to draw the blood is because he wants to see how healthy I am. He wants to see how well I'm doing in regards to my health. And so what they do, they look in the blood. And so what they're looking for is they're looking to measure different levels and different things going on in my blood. Like, for example, they want to look at the white blood cell count. They want to look at the red blood cell count. They want to look at the iron in my blood. <laughs> and they have to look at the cholesterol. I wish they wouldn't look there, but they have to look. And the triglycerides. And they have to look at all these different things. And so what they do is, once they get the levels or the numbers from my blood, they measure those numbers against a predetermined, watch this, listen very closely, a predetermined standard a predetermined standard, and they measure that, and they say, okay, according to the standard, you, your blood levels and the, the stuff that's in your blood is either normal or it's not. It's either healthy or you're not. Yeah. Listen, that is true physically, but also there is a predetermined standard that God has given us in the Word of God that, help us, that helps us understand if we are living under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You're like, tell me, Pastor John, what is it? What is it, Pastor John? Are you ready for this? You guys ready for this? Listen, control yourself. I'm about to say it, but when I do, please control yourself because you're, you're probably going to blow the roof off. You're going to want to, but we got to get this message done. Okay? Listen, it's called check the fruit. I would love, have loved to have a camera right now. Because some of you guys are like, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? And when I said, check the fruit, you're like, oh. <laughs> Listen to Galatians. Listen to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. The who? The Holy Spirit produces what? Yeah, this kind of fruit in our lives. And then it says, uh, uh, love. How many, how many love some joy? Anybody in the house like some joy? I mean, just the joy. The Holy, oh, that's awesome, man. I love joy. What about some peace? Anybody like a little peace? Right? We, oh, we love that one. What about, what about y'all? You ready for this one? How about patience? Yes, patience. Me too. Love it, patience. How about some kindness and goodness and faithfulness, gentleness, and what? Self-control. Walked by that cake and said, I'm not moved in the name of Jesus. I'm going to walk right by it. <laughs> I don't do very well at that one when it comes to the cake. And it doesn't work well on my numbers, on my blood stuff either. It says there are no law against these. And so we can measure. Uh, these are all things that we can measure. We can measure our spiritual progress, our relationship in regards to living under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, 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 I really struggled with this one a bit because I look, there are nine there, and I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to be able to get through all of those. So then I prayed. I said, Father, Holy Spirit, which one do you want me to pick? Because I can't do all of them. So which one, which one do I really need to focus on, Holy Spirit? Because I've only got about 35 or 40 minutes for this sermon. Anyway, that's what the clock says. I don't always go by the clock, but I do my best. Which one? And you know which one he told me? 
You know which one? Are you guys ready for this? Love. Then we're like, oh, love is so sweet. Well, we'll see how, we'll see when we get done with this message. <laughs> and you're like, why? Why? Because number one, it's at the top of the list. How many know if, it's at the t- if you got one at the top of the list, you better pay attention to that one. It's at the top of the list. He started out with love. On the top of the list, there is love. Talk about our spiritual checkup. Really determine if we are truly, truly, truly under the influence of Holy Spirit. And then 1 Corinthians 13, 13, Paul said this. He said, these things uh, will last forever. Faith, how many knows we need faith and how many are thankful that we can have faith and we got someone and something to put our faith in? How many, how many are thankful for that, right? What about hope? He said hope. Well, yeah, we gotta have faith. We gotta have hope and love. But the greatest of these is what? It is what? It's love. Colossians 3, 14, uh, the Passion Translation says this. It says, for love is supreme. Love is, is what? It's supreme. Watch this next part. It says it must flow through each of these virtues. Watch this. Love becomes the mark of maturity. Love becomes the true mark of what? Maturity. Is there anybody in here that would agree with me, that agrees with the word of God that says that we as believers need to grow up? That as believers, we need to what? Grow what? Grow up. And that love is the mark of what? Maturity. Not how long you've been in church, not what gifts the Holy Spirit allows you uh, to have and to work, that he speaks to you. Maybe you may pray in tongues. You know, you can pray in tongues 40 days in in a row, but you know what? Still not be spiritually mature. Now, we don't discount that. We're going to talk about that one next week. It's a good one. Are you following this? But people say, I I don't know. There's this love thing, Pastor John. Is it really that big of a deal? I'm here to tell you it's that big of a deal because, listen, listen, you you, you may be here like, you know, I want want you to talk about how the Holy Spirit's going to cause me to be victorious and how to fight the fight and give me the power to fight. He does that. But let me tell you something. You don't want just the fight. You want the fruit. Because if you don't have the fruit, you're not going to fight very well. Love is the true mark of maturity. And so the outflow of God's love is evidence that the Holy Spirit is working in your life. The outflow. So often we're just like, oh, Father, you love me. And he does. Oh, Jesus, you love me. And he does. But our focus has been so overly focused and so lean this way on God's love to us that we forget about the other very important that the uh, aspect of God's love and that that is God's love being what in us and it flowing what through us that is the mark of true spiritual maturity can I stop and just thank myself just thank you Pastor John I just thank you Pastor I just I need to hear that. So here's the reason that, that you want love flowing through you. Here, 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 here's the reason you want this, and it is such a big deal. It's, it's, it's this. Love confirms. If you're taking notes, write that down. Love, love confirms. Love confirms that you truly belong to God. Love confirms that you truly belong to God. Love flowing through you truly confirms that you belong to God. Sometimes when I meet people and they ask me, what I do, and hey, John, my name's John. They introduce themselves, and they, they say, well, what do you do? And honestly, I have a battle that takes place in that moment because there are times, honestly, guys, I want to lie. <laughs> I, I just don't want, I, I just, I, sometimes I'm tempted just to say, well, I'm in marketing. <laughs> and technically I am, technically I am. I'm here to promote Jesus. I'm here to promote his kingdom. I'm here to direct people. That, technically I am in marketing, technically. But I just, I, just, I just can't do that. So I'll say, I, I say I'm, a, I'm a pastor. And it's funny, it's like this little switch goes off in them. It's like they go from this person to this person. Oh, really? And you, you know what happens often? Often, they, 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 I don't ask for it, they just give it to me. They say, well, well they want to communicate and tell me which religious tribe they're a part of. I am a, 
I'm a Baptist, or I'm Assemblies of God, or I'm Methodist, or I'm Presbyterian, or I'm Catholic, I'm non-denominational, or I've got my own thing going with God, you know, whatever. They're just, they, they just, they want to tell me I am this because that, they believe that's their identity. That's how they identify themselves as Christians, as believers, right? Or they'll go the other one, and sometimes they'll do both. They'll go, I'm this, I go, my religious tribe is this group, and I go to what the next one is, and I go to this church. This is the name of my church, this is the name of my pastor, and that's what identifies me as a Christian, as a believer. But I'm here to tell you, that's not in the Bible. What church we go to, what religious tribe we're a part of, that does not confirm, that does not confirm that we belong to God and that we're a follower of Christ. You say, so what, what does confirm that? Well, it's the outflow of what? Of love. Let me, give you, let me just give you Jesus, his definition, and as he, as he shares this, some clarity and shines the light on this particular thing about love confirms that you belong to God. John 13, 35, Jesus says, when you demonstrate the same love, when you what? Demonstrate, not just when you believe, listen to me, because you listen, you can believe in God's love being in you, but that doesn't mean that it's in you. It's not until you begin to demonstrate, it's what Jesus is saying here, for when you demonstrate the same love, I have loved, um, I loved you by loving one another. Watch this next part, watch this next part, watch this. Then what, who, who, come on, Nick. come on, come on, come on, come on, media people, media, there we go. Then everyone will what, will know that you're my true what, followers. When what, what happens? When you tell them to tribe, the religious tribe that you're a part of, or what church you go to, is put it back up, please. Is that when, pull it back up, please. Pull it back up, please. Is that when everyone will know? Just leave it up, please. Is that when everyone will know? No, because you know what? Today, a lot of people don't even know the religious tribes. They don't know, they don't know Baptists from Assemblies of God, from Presbyterian to Met. They don't know, so it doesn't matter. They don't know your pastor's name, and, and often they, they, don't, they don't know the churches. My goodness, we got 75,000 right here in Jesus' report. No, everyone, everyone will know that you're my true followers when, when you demonstrate the same love that I have loved you by what? Loving what? One another. It's that outflow, it's that demonstration of love. <laughs> Listen, we are living in a different world today. We're living in a way different world today. As a matter of fact, Acts 1.8 says, Acts 1.8, uh, I didn't get it to them, so they're not gonna put it up there. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, watch this, and you will be my what? My, my witnesses. Witnesses do what? Witnesses influence. So, so you, you, wanna, you wanna check the fruit in your life and see how you're doing in regards to if God, if you're truly under the influence of the Holy Spirit, well, you just measure this, measure, look at the fruit and go, am I allowing this love that God has loved uh, me with, am I allowing that to come through me? Or are you just concerned about yourself and making sure that you're gonna go to heaven? Moving right along. Here's the next thing about love. Love connects. Love connects. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, when you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. When you do things, what kind of things? Things. Things, anything. Watch this. Do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not, watch this, this is so good. Listen to what God the Holy Ghost is saying right here. Do not be interested in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. Don't be interested just in your life, but be interested in the lives of others. Practically, real world, how does that work? What does that look like? I'm gonna give you one biggie. Showing that you're really interested in others, it's when you listen to them. Yeah. 
It's when you listen. Listen to me. This outflow of love, the, if this love is what motivates you and, and, and this is flowing in your life, it's evidence it's the Holy Spirit's working in your life. If, 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 if the Holy Spirit's working in your life and love is the fruit of that, I promise you, you will be a selfless listener. You know, different kind of listeners, right? You got the selective listeners. Anybody know one of those? No pointing fingers. The selective listening, the selective listener is the person, they're just listening, they're just listening to what they want to listen to, they forget all the rest, right? They're just selective, select, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that, but they're not listening. You got the defensive listener, and the defensive listener is one who, as they're listening to you, they're building their case, waiting for you to shut up so they can present their case to you. Right. <laughs> it's not a good listener. The selfishness. But then the best one is there's, there's those who listen to learn. They listen because they want to understand. They're not selfish listeners because they want to they wanna understand. And you say, Pastor John, is this, is this that really big of a deal? Do you have to spend some time talking about this this morning? Well, let me just share with you how big of a deal it could be and really is. Let's talk about marriage real quick. How many know that the enemy is coming after marriages left and right? You know why he's coming after marriages left and right? Let me tell you why. Let me give you the spiritual reason for it. Tell me, what, what relationship does the Apostle Paul compare Christ to the church with? Marriage between a husband and a wife. That's the reason the enemy's coming after marriages because it is a picture. It is a picture of what the church and, and relationship between God's people and Jesus should look like. So if, if, he can, if he can hit marriage, and he is, if he can destroy marriages, which he does, if he's coming after marriages, which he is definitely doing that, it, it creates a void, and it creates um, a void in the sense of we, we don't have as much to point to when it says, hey, Christ the church, Jesus in the church, a relationship with Jesus looks like a marriage. Well, you say that to some people, they're like, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Are you following me? But, but what if, what if, what if a husband listens selflessly and he listened to his wife to learn about his wife? Now the men are going, ain't no way. I'll never figure her out. It ain't no way. It ain't no way. And the wise wives, you just meant, uh, missed a great opportunity to say, thank you, Pastor John, for bringing that up. No, there is a way to understand. And listen, it goes back the other way. Where wives listen, really listen to their husbands to learn. You see, because listen, even outside of a relationship, even outside of marriage, when you listen to someone and they can tell if you're listening to someone to learn about them, that's showing that you care about them and you're interested enough in their life to hear their story or to hear their life. Let me ask you this. What do you think would happen in race relations in America? What, what do you think would happen? When individuals of different color listen to learn about each other that we truly listened and were interested in their life, where they're coming from. Are you following me? You know what happens? It creates a bridge and it creates unity. So you're like, is this really that big of a deal? You tell me. You tell me. Because those, those two relationships, the relationship between a man and a woman is being attacked today. And the church, the church is the starting point for getting it right. In race relations, listen to me, the church is the starting point. We are the only ones that have the equipment, the tools, the ability, the power to get it right. To be an example to the world. 
Amen, Pastor John. Love, love, listen to me. Love, love will help you listen better. And if you are, matter of fact, I've been spending several weeks with some, some with, we've become good friends now. Not just friendly, but friends. With, with individuals that are different color than me. I've got some exciting things coming up and I can't wait. But I'm telling you, it, it all begins with listening. It all begins with what? Listening to learn. Love, if you're taking notes, write this down. Love will put you in your place. How many's ever been put in their place before? Come on, somebody. If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. Raise kids, you know what I'm talking about. Love puts you in your place. Colossians 3.13 says this. This is to be even-tempered. Watch this. Content with second place. Be even-tempered what? Content with what place? Quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly, as completely, and completely as the master forgave you. How do you do that? How do you, how do you become content? How do you uh, be willing to go to second place? Colossians, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For why, why? It is not what? Self-seeking. This, ladies and gentlemen, is counterintuitive to our cultural norm because our culture today says, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. If you want to get ahead in life, if you want to do best, you want to have the best in life, then what? You got to take care of what? You, you got to be number one. Can I better amen than that? That's what the world, that's what the culture says. If you don't think about yourself, who will? If you don't take care of yourself, what? Who will? But here, here not in God's economy. Because if you are, you are allowing the Holy Spirit to lean in on you and to influence your life, here's what you'll, here's what you'll do. You will determine in your heart and your mind that you will not be the center of the universe, that you are fine with being second. Watch this. Because with God, when you are second, you are first. With God, when you are second, you're first. Can give you a couple of examples. Proverbs 3, 6 is one of them. This is the Living Bible. And everything you do, what? Put God where? And everything you do, put what? Who first? And he will direct, your, uh, di direct you and crown your efforts with success. Second place is the best place to be when it comes to God. Because when you're second place, not God, not you, but God is first. God is first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put him first, you're second. What happens is, is that he influences whatever's behind him. And this is also important, watch this, in regards to being deceived. A lot of times we walk through life and we're going through life and as believers, we're thinking, oh, I can't be deceived. No way. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, listen very closely to me. A selfish person has the greatest chance to be deceived. A selfish person, you got the greatest chance of being deceived. And here's why. Because a person that's selfish they're always thinking about themselves. And deception says, if you have this, it will make you better. And today, today I, I've, I recently became acutely aware of spiritualism and a lot of spirituality that's out there that is so deceptive. Listen to me, that today Christians are blending spiritualism with what they believe is Christianity. They're blending the two together. Listen, because it's, it's mainstream, uh, people that are very successful, they're, they're, they're preaching this and they're teaching this, they're saying I'm a spiritual person, they're saying I'm blessed. The problem is, is that, that your profession of spiritualism, who is it based on? Or what is it based on? There, there, there is a very deceptive teaching out there. It's called the, the um, it's spiritualism, and it's, called, it's based on what's called the law of attraction. It's the law of attraction. And that, that, that universe essentially 
has been replaced with God. But how many of you know, you don't, man replaces God with universe, but God will never be replaced. God is God and nobody will ever replace him. It's a made up lie and people and even Christians are buying into it left and right. And here's the, here's the big deal with it. It's all based on what the universe can do for me. It's all, it's all in how the universe can make me successful and how, how the universe can manifest blessings in my life. It says nothing about God. It says nothing about Jesus. It's all about who? It's all about me because you, they believe I'm first. But when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to influence your life, you're not first. You're second, and you will not buy into that garbage because you know there's more to this life than just you. There is God, and there's a world out there that needs to know God. Can somebody say amen to that? You won't buy into it, but if you are living a selfish life, you'll you have a better chance of being sucked into it because it is so close. I always say this to you as you're checking, maybe checking things out a little bit. Just find out what they say about Jesus. Not that they mention Jesus. What do they say about Jesus? Amen? Last one is this. Love is, is our commandment. How's the fruit? How's the fruit? That's what we're talking about. How are we doing in regards to living under the influence of the Holy Spirit? How's the fruit? Love is our commandment. Did you ever consider, as I wrap this up, did you ever consider that Jesus wants to know if you love him? Did you ever stop and think about that? Did you ever stop and think that Jesus wants to know if you love him? Now, we talk a lot about Jesus loving us, right? Oh, Jesus loves me, and he does. <laughs> Jesus loves me. Come on, now, you sound good. For the... We love that, don't we? That was complete. We just had a musical moment right here. Music. I've always said musicals don't happen, but they just, it just happened, right? Spontaneous. But we all think about that, right? We always think about that. We love the fact that Jesus loves us, and we should. We will be forever grateful for that. But my question is this. Do you love, do you love Jesus? Jesus loves you, but do you love Jesus? How do you know? How, how do you know? No, 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 really, how do you know? By your standard or by his? Are you measuring that? Let me, let me just look at this, because you know, even Jesus one day, he said, he looked at Peter and he said, do you love me? He wondered. But here is evidence that we love Jesus. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, watch this, obey my what? Not... Suggestions, not recommendations, but what? By my commandments, because you may go, oh, are you talking about the Ten Commandments? Or how many, how many commandments we've got to obey? Is it 10, 20, 50, 100, 600? Well, I just quit. I can't, there's no way. <laughs> Good news, it's not 50, it's not 100, it's not 10. It's just, it's just two. Just, just two commands. Talking about love, God's love being in us and it flowing, it being an outflow of our life. And that's evidence that the Holy Spirit is influencing our life, being filled with the Spirit. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39, says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first, this is the first, number one. That's the first commandment, the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. And what does it say? Love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus said, if you love me, then what? You'll obey my commandments. The commandments are very simple. Love God and, and care about people and love people. That's not hard, is it? That's not hard to love God. It's, it's, that's pretty easy to love God. I mean, he just loved us and we just love him back and but, but the truth is, the truth is, loving those people, 
that can get tricky. That can be, a, I'm, I'm, I'm good with commandment number one, Jesus, but commandment number two, that one's a bit tricky. And here's the truth. You can't love your neighbor. You can't love people without the help of the Holy Spirit. Because if you try to love them without the help of the Holy Spirit, they will drive you crazy. You'll go nutso. You say, well, what, is that, what does that look like, loving, loving other people? I mean, is that just my family? No, this goes beyond your family. It's just taking a moment to show people that you care for them and that God cares for them. Just taking some time. That's the hardest part. It's the time thing. People say, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. And you will not make time unless you do it. I mean, you, you can make time. We, we, we ask people, we encourage people, get involved in serving on a surf team on the weekends around here. Make a difference in somebody's life. I don't have time. Oh, do you? It just requires you to be here maybe a little bit early on a Sunday. That's it. You want to know more about that? Jump and discover. We'll help you with that. Maybe you've been kicking the tires for a little bit, looking for a church. You want to get involved? Get to discover. Get in the game. It's time. We're doing great, but we'll, we'd be doing so much better with you. We're doing great. Our volunteers do a great job, but we would do better with you. But then there's moments that you're maybe out in the community like Sandy and I, uh, one time we were, we were going shopping and we decided we we're going to run in for a quick grocery shopping moment. How many's ever done one of those? Quick. So we're driving and we, we're, you know, we, we got to get it done. And so we're driving, say, all right, what do we, what do we need? And she, she said, you know, gave the list. I said, okay, I'm going to take half, you take half. So we're going to hit the doors. You go your way. I'm going to go mine. We'll meet back in the middle of checkout. We'll be out of here like five minutes. We're done. Right? So I'm, I'm grabbing my things, watching my clock. Man, this is good. This is awesome. We're going to set our goal. We're going to be out of here, get on with some other things that we wanted to do. So I'm, I'm around a corner, and I see this lady. She's one of those cart things, and she takes an item off the uh, shelf. She looked at it, and then she put it back, and she came back, and then she, she put it back. But I could tell that she was thinking about it because it's like I could tell it was a budget. It was in her mind, that budget. I don't know if I can afford it. And you know what the Holy Spirit said? Pay for her groceries. But we didn't want to run right up there. So I went back and I told Sandy what had happened. And, and I said, we got to pay for this woman's groceries. She, she said, absolutely, we'll do it. So we decided we're not going to tell her then. We'll just wait till she gets to the checkout count, checkout lane. And how long could that take? <laughs> right? And so we're, we're, we're in the grocery store and, you know, we're, we're trying not to stalk, but we're stalking. You know what I'm saying? We're look at the bread and kind of watching. She goes around the next corner and then we go over here and then we're looking at some over here, kind of looking. And I'm like, come on, lady. I don't got all day. I got to love my neighbor, but this is taking more time. But I had this, both Sandy and I had this strong thing on the inside. No, we've got to do this. You know why? It's a commandment. It's a commandment to make a difference in somebody else's life. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. So finally, <laughs> finally, she got to the checkout line. We went up to her and we said, ma'am, you don't know us, but we want to pay for your groceries. Oh, no, no, you don't have to. No, ma'am, we're paying for these groceries. I waited this long, I'm telling you. No, no, I didn't. That's not true. I wasn't even thinking that. I wasn't even thinking that. I was like, I want to pay for your groceries. She said, no, no, no. I said, no, no, we have to, ma'am. Please allow us. So we paid for groceries. We actually went outside and helped her, you know, put the groceries in her vehicle. And she, she had tears. And she said, you, and I, we told her, we said, God hadn't forgotten about you. He loves you. And he hasn't forgotten about you. He's crazy in love with you. That's what we prayed. That's what we said. Put her groceries. And she said, you do not know how much this meant to me. You don't know. Listen. If we're truly under the influence of the Holy Spirit, if we're truly under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we take love seriously that it's not a suggestion, it's a commandment, that we look for chances to make a difference in people's lives, even on weekends and even in the neighborhood, because it's a commandment on weekends, but it's a commandment during the week as well. The world needs to know God, ladies and gentlemen. And the only way, the only way he can get it done is through us. 
yielding to the Holy Spirit and the helper that he is to be the people that he's called us to be. How's the fruit? How's the fruit? You gonna check it tomorrow? You gonna check it this week? Next week? See how you're doing? The checkup? I hope you do because this is what the Holy Spirit's asking us to do starting today. Starting today. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus and we're so thankful for the Holy Spirit. He is so dear and he is so precious to us. So grateful that you didn't leave us comfortless, but you sent the Holy Spirit to come in us to help us that we can yield our lives to him and we can yield to his influence and live under his influence and be the people that you've called us to be and ultimately be the most satisfied and fulfilled we could ever be because we're living a life in the spirit and of the spirit by the spirit according to your will and so God for all of us I believe as we look to check the fruit that you'll even help us by the person of the Holy Spirit Show us how we're doing, not to condemn us, but to help us. Father, we thank you for the leading and the help and the work of the most beautiful, the most incredible person on the planet, the most important person on the planet. It's the Holy Spirit. Please keep your heads bowed just for another moment because I got to take this time. I'm not going to take but just a moment. I'm going to get right to the point. If you're here this morning and your relationship with God is not where it needs to be, you need to change that. If your relationship with God is distant and you've been doing your own thing, it's time to change that. It's time to change it. If you've decided that maybe one day after I've quit having fun, then I'm going to have a relationship with God. I'm gonna surrender to him. You're being deceived. You don't wanna go there. There are too many hurts. There are too many things that can happen. Don't live your life that way. And in just a moment, we're going to pray this prayer. We're going to pray it all as a church and online. You can be a part of this. You should be a part of this. If you're here in this room or you're online and you're like, you know what? Today, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ because my relationship with God is not where it needs to be. I need you to get your hand up right now and say, yep, when I pray that prayer, I'm going to mean it. Yes, I see you to the right. Yes, I see you over to the right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the room? Get your hand up right now. We're not, we're not going to take much longer, but we got to do this. Maybe online. You know that your relationship with God is not where it needs to be. Why don't you join us right now as we pray in this room. Church, let's do this. Let's pray together for these pre- with these precious people. <laughs> We're part of this moment together with these precious people that have raised their hand. Let's pray together. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for not giving up on me. I thank you, Father, for welcoming me with open arms today. I surrender to your love right now. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. And today I allow him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for this fresh start. Thank you, God, for this new beginning. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Everybody that agrees says a great big... I'm sure some online, I know in the room, people raise your hand. Let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. Amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.